she liked to paint at Montmartre. And um, she tried to write a third novel, uh, which I found this year. I had never seen before. It wasn't that good, and it didn't get published. Um, but, uh, but you know, good for her to try. In 1930, she did a cross-country road trip with her buddy Grace Hill, and um, they drove from Maine to uh, Pasadena, I think, uh, California, kind of using a southern route. They, they left January 1st. And Florence drove the entire way, except for like a 20 mile stretch in the Mojave Desert when um, Grace, it was like a straight road and it was very flat, and Grace thought that she could do it. She was kind of, a, kind of a nervy woman. I, I really think she was cool. Um, this is a photo. I'm not sure, I can't even figure out the area yet, but this is on State Street in, um, uh, in Portland. And that's her website. So that, that concludes my remarks. Now, I, just, I, I will say that. If, if I knew her today, I would think that she was a pretty cool woman. But against the backdrop of her time, I, you know, she really was pretty amazing. And for me, as I got to know her through her own words and, and, uh, and the history that surrounded them, uh, she, I felt like though she encouraged me to, um, you know, to, to set my hand to the things that I really cared about. And, and uh, she became a great role model for me in doing that. And I think she can do that for other people embrace her as one of me's treasures. Who was the Scalawag senator who changed his vote at the last Oh, it's Hale. Claren uh, Hale? Uh, Frederick Hale. Okay. Yeah. His, his uncle, Clarence, was a judge in Portland, so certainly the White House family knew him and, um, and you know, were probably social peers of his. In fact, there's, Florence used to make notes of, uh, of important interviews uh, afterward to, to, so she could uh, you know, remember what happened. And she, she goes to, to Hale at one point, and he's got a fellow senator up from New Jersey visiting up here in Maine. And she, she goes over, this is like 1918 or so, to, to try and persuade him to change his vote. And, um, and she, she tells him, look, if you can't change your vote, just go for a walk. You know, just pair up and uh, take off so you're not present when the vote's, you know, actually cast. And um, so he says, no, I can't do that. And, uh, yeah, he, he was, you know, I think in the end, uh, I know they remained friends, I think, in the end. But it was definitely, he was a bit of a weasel. Yeah. Any other questions? When did she pass? Uh, it was 1945. Um, and she was in her 70s, um, and she died of a heart attack sort of very quickly. I've always been glad because it was, uh, I think it was in the spring, it was before the bombs were dropped on, on, in Japan, and I, I just think that that might have killed her. <laughs> you know, if, uh, so I'm kind of glad that she didn't live to see those. And what about the boy? Uh, so my grandfather grew up to be an attorney also, and he was a partner in Beryl Dana, Walker, Philbrick, and White House in Portland, and um, now just Vera Dana, I think. And uh, let's see, the eldest son, he was a bit wacky. Um, he, he ended up going out, well, the both of the older sons ended up going out to California. And um, the, the eldest son became very kind of John Birchie and, and um, you know, was really pissed off that the U.S. went off the gold standard. And he would write these greedy poems, and, and um, I, I found one the other day, and it was like 10 pages of crazy stuff. So, but uh, he was also an attorney. Um, you know, he was he he was not very good with money, and, and he lost the houses on Squirrel um, in, in 1930. And um, I mean, a lot of people lost stuff in the 30s anyway. But and, and he, he uh, Florence ended up having to move out of her nice West End house, and they had to sell that. And um, she moved into his law office, which were his, which was on the top floor of the, um, the State Street building and, and where the State Street you know, auditorium is now. And um, she literally lived in a small room and used his conference room as her living room. And, um, but she was very good humored about the whole thing and, and she just said that she liked to go to the movies and now she can do it every day. <laughs> she had to go downstairs. Um, and then later on, the family bought, um, uh, her boys bought her a farm out in East Raymond, uh, which uh, my cousins still own, and, and um, they bought her that in the early 40s, I guess, when the family 
Women's Finance has recovered somewhat. And um, so that was their gift to her for having been such a good sport and lost so much. And if you could channel your great grandmother, and we get to ask Florence, so what do you think are the major goals, aspirations of American women? What should they be today? What should they be today? What do um, you think she'd say? Um, I think that she'd be supportive of, of, of abortion rights. Um, she was definitely interested in those, and, and she understood the need for, for family planning. Um, and control, of, you know, women's control of fertility. Um, I, you know, I would guess that some of the things that, you know, things like, I wondered myself whether things like same-sex marriage would, might have been beyond the pale for her. But I think in general, um, you know, she was much less stodgy and conservative than her, her peers. One, one of the organizers um, who, that Alice Paul sent up to try to help her put pressure on Hale, um, described uh, Portlanders as, as mahogany furniture. She said they're just so dodgy. <laughs> and uh, but Florence <laughs> and Robert weren't like that at all. So I, I mean, I think definitely, you know, she says it in her poem. You know, the work I set my hand to, women's work, because I I set my hand to it. And I think that she just would feel that that uh, women should have the right to to do what they decide they want to do, whether it's have a family or not. Mm -hmm. But I also think that she would say, if you have a family, you have a responsibility, not necessarily to stay home with the kids and give up your career, but just to make sure they're taken care of when they need you. 